Hello, hello, kings, queens, and everybody in between. I am Ashley Michelle, and welcome back to the Goddess Complex. It has been a little bit. We are in season three. We kicked off season three with an amazing guest, Zoe Greco. If you haven't listened to that episode, go check it out. Zoe and I had an amazing conversation on spiritual leadership and entrepreneurship in the online space. And today I give you some more of that amazing tea. I have Danielle with me here today and we're TV buddies. We're on a whole show together. <laughs> and, and that is so a fact. That is a fact, right? And it just so happens that um, Danielle also works in the spiritual space. And so I have found a lot of comfort and Danielle and being able to talk with her about what it's like to have an already established brand and brand identity before stepping into this weird matrixy 3D TV space. So we're going to have an amazing conversation today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that being said, Danielle, tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you're about, all the tea. Uh, my name is Danielle Gates. I'm originally from New York. I'm now based in Florida. Um, I've been leading this spiritual journey, um, probably I'd say since 2008, so my brand, Yenza, I didn't start until 2018, so I've been doing this work for about six years in my own space, um, and I basically have an online membership platform for people who are looking for spiritual learning and healing, I run retreats around the world, I do private coaching, um, and I create a lot, a lot of online content um, to help to connect, I kind of consider myself more of like a spiritual broker um I get a lot of people who come to me like everything's falling apart I need to find Jesus help me <laughs> you know yeah. like they they kind of you know they come to me in these power moments where they kind of need guidance and so I try to guide people onto the spiritual path that will work for them not necessarily the one that works for me but yeah. the one that I see will work for different people I love that you say that one thing that I love to say, and any of you all listening that are in my private portals, you probably know what I'm going to say. I believe in making spirituality accessible, you know, in this age of Aquarius and the age of technology, you know, it's got its, its pits and its valleys, you know, it's ups and it's downs. And I think one of the lows is that everything is so curated. And so even when you see spiritual content online, it's like, I can't live a spiritual life unless I have 18 different colored candles, 56 different crystals. I have a red robe and I have this amazing backyard space that is in direct alignment with the moon. And, you know, I always tell folks, it's, it doesn't have to be that deep. You connecting to your spiritual path can be something as simple as holding a tiny little piece of carnelian on your third eye or on your root chakra and just talking to it, programming it. And so I always make an effort and a point to give tips and, and tricks and little life hacks to make spirituality accessible and helping people recognize that anybody can live a spiritual life, you know, anybody can heal in any way they want to. You don't have to have all these gadgets and things, you know? Yeah. My teacher definitely instilled in me, all you need is a candle and a glass of water. Fuck yeah. You can get your, get yeah. your hands on a candle and a glass of water. You can connect with spirit and that's all you need. Mm -hmm. And partly because I travel so, so much, it's very hard yeah. for me to like, you know, people have traveling altars. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of yeah. hard for me to bring all the tools that I'm going to need everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And so for mm -hmm. me, it's just, I make sure I always have some key lights and a glass in my room. And that yeah. I also want to do. And that comes with huh. years and years of practice. Exactly. Years and years I think of in the beginning, you know, we're all like, is this right? Is this right? Is this right? Yeah. Is this right? We come yeah. from these systems that condition us to believe that there is a right path and a wrong path. In one way exactly. is correct and one way is not. And there's also like a, a lot of media around witchiness and mm -hmm. spells. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, these spells are listed. Like you have to have this, 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 and this. And if you do mm -hmm. this wrong and this is going to happen at night, I just don't believe in all of that. So I think you yeah. know, we have to uncondition people to believe that, you know, the spells are like a recipe book. And if you don't follow it correctly, you're going right. to spontaneously combust. Right. I mean, magic is intuitive and grimoires are grimoires for a reason. You know, so like you create the recipe, the magic is within you. You put together what yeah. you believe needs to be put together to create the result that you're looking for. You know, yeah. um, 
I think in other parts of spirituality, we can get more rule oriented, like in astrology, Mars is always going to be the planet of passion, you know, but when it comes to actual ritual work and spell work, you create that. I think that's where the magic lives. When you're like, I think I'm going to use this crystal. I think I'm going to use that candle. I think I'm going to etch something, you know, like when you are putting it together and really moving that energy, that is what I have found when my spells always manifest. Not when I'm following somebody else's rule book that I found on fucking Google, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the Google PDF. Yeah. All the answers for your life. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how did you get into spirituality? Tell me a little bit about that. You know, it was always very much a part of my life because my grandparents were very religious. My grandmother specifically on my mom's side was um, very, very Catholic. We had a lot of bleeding Jesuses all over my house and every room. Everything was a sin. Um, you know, I very much was raised in that kind of environment, but I always had, like, felt like this connection to cathedral and, like, yeah. really, like opulent churches and cathedrals and, and like Catholic institutions. So when I was younger and I would travel, um, when I was 19, I backpacked through Europe. I like went to all these cities and I really focused not so much on museums and like theater, but more on like cathedrals. I went to cathedrals in every single city. And I went to the Vatican during the Jubilee year, um, this was back in 2000, like before I had my son. And I remember going in for a mass. It was Pope John Paul II. And I was by myself. So someone told me where to sit so I could touch him when he went by in his little Pope mobile. And I did. And like being in there in that mass all by myself, it, just, it was my first time that I had like really felt mm -hmm. a spiritual connection. And I can't mm -hmm. really describe what that yeah. feels like, yeah. but it's almost like these chills and this presence and, and whatever right. it is. And I'm right. even feeling it now. Yeah. And it's not something I can really describe with words. And so that was the first time that I felt like connected. But that still didn't really, you know, it wasn't the thing that like was the nail in the coffin, I guess is what people say. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it was my yoga practice. Mm -hmm. And realizing, you know, when I started practicing yoga, that it wasn't just like this athletic thing about postures and about what you look like in the mirror. It was more about the philosophy and you know, the other seven limbs that are outside of asana, right? The yamas, yeah. the niyamas, how we treat each other, how we treat ourselves, how yeah. we meditate, how we breathe, the kind of work we do in the world. It was starting to explore all of those elements of yoga that made me realize that I really wanted to live a more spiritual life. Because once I started living more in alignment with the scriptures, and by scriptures, I mean religious text, which could right. be spiritual text, I should say, the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. you know, or you know, the Bible or the Quran mm -hmm. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. they all kind of say the same thing. Right. You know, once you start living, you know, don't look for your neighbor's husband. Don't, yeah. don't try yeah. to finesse your way out of taxes. Yeah, you know, yeah, once yeah. you start living the right way, you see how your life really unfolds in such a beautiful way. And so yeah. I think it was like, the more evidence I had that spirituality was the direction I wanted to move in, the more, you know, I, I just felt aligned with it. And then because my nature is, to be a teacher that is certainly I think a gift that I was born with it just came naturally as I was practicing these things for people to ask me for guidance as they were being introduced to the same thing so yeah. it kind of just happened you know it wasn't overnight it wasn't like oh I took this class and it changed my mind it right. was more like something that happened over the course of more than a decade Right, right, right. Um, I love that you spoke to the spiritual feeling you felt in a church, because I think a huge misconception with both of us being spiritual, mystical, whatever you want to call us, is that there's no belief in God or that we don't find spirituality and religion. And I also grew up very religious. My family's super religious. I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. I, I totally grew up very religious. And I've had such spiritual experiences inside of kingdom halls and inside of churches. And, you know, a huge misconception is, is like, oh my God, you need God, you need Jesus, honey. I've got God probably more than you do. Like my relationship <laughs> yeah. with God is strong as fuck. It's the strongest it has ever been, my relationship with God. So I love that you spoke to that because I think that's a huge misconception in general when we are talking about, you know, the quote muggles and when they are peering into spiritual world and spiritual folks that they think that 
they have to be separate. This idea of separation needs to happen. And, you know, one of my biggest life goals with my yeah. business in Starseed Shadows is to show folks that one does not have to forego the other, that they both can truly coexist in a multitude of ways. You know, I can, I can work a spell at my altar and I can still have and have deep conversation with God, Yahweh, source universe, you know, what I mean? it's all the same thing. And I think people are slowly getting there, but it's very much a work in progress. You know, I think part of the problem is when we're taught about God, as we're learning spirituality, we're taught a very particular story. Mm -hmm. So like if you're raised in a Catholic house, you're taught a very specific story about what God yeah. looks like, yeah. who God is, what gender God represents. So the it's like you have this, yeah, yeah, you have this very specific picture that may or may not be hanging all over your home, depending wow. on your practice. Mm -hmm. You know, if you grow up Muslim, you're you're hearing a very specific story very about much who so. Muhammad is and, and the, the idea that you can't have these icons. So depending on how you grow up, you're you're hearing a story. But as a history teacher, my perspective is storytelling helps us understand things conceptually. Yeah. As humans, we are not in a place where we understand God consciousness yet. Yeah. Once yeah. we fully understand God consciousness, we are ready to transcend. And we no right. longer have to live in this earth realm anymore. That's right, my belief right, right, right. So none of us, not you, not me, not anyone on this mm -hmm. earth realm is able to really understand what God is. Right. I, to me, God is substance. God is within us. We are all the same God. We, exactly. In a flesh suit. Yeah. You know, it's just, we're just wearing different costumes, but mm -hmm. it, it we are actually all one, you know? So I think that yeah. that takes a lot of elevation to understand. And I think I just, most of us don't have the time to sit and read and study and practice to get there because we're so worried about paying bills and making mm -hmm. sure it's in the right summer camp mm -hmm. and making sure we have we go to the right barbecue or mm -hmm. whatever it is we're mm -hmm. not practicing our connection to god but yeah. when you lose everything and everything falls apart and collapses and you have nothing left that's when everybody gets on their knees and begs and prays please god right. help me that's right. when we find god and so yeah. i think that you know yoga people don't go to because everything's going well they go to yoga because it's their last resort so i think yeah that's true for a lot of people in their relationship with god they only go for their last resort and yeah. so i think as people have access to more information about religion about what god looks like and what god could be for you and it might be different for you than it is for me i think that people will start to make those connections a little bit easier and start to forego some of the bullshit that we pay attention to in our lives that are not serving us. You know, exactly. like there's so much nonsense that we do in the hamster wheel that we're trying to live in our capitalist yeah. society that gets in the way of our understanding of God. So yeah. my goal is, is to help people like let some of that shit go and start to study how they connect to God. Mm. God, I am picking up everything you're putting down, girlfriend. <laughs> um, so switching gears a little bit, but not a whole lot. So how'd you get on TV? What made you want to go on TV? What, what made you want to go on that fucking hamster wheel? That is television. <laughs> <laughs> Reality you know, television at that. <laughs> so I guess, sorry, my allergies are like miserable. I've been flying all over the country for like two weeks and I'm just losing it. Um, okay, what made me want to go on the wheel? I think, and I'm being honest, I think when I was little, there was always like some idea, like I wanted to be a star, you know, there's yeah. always, I have an Aries moon. It's very much mm. in my personality. Mm -hmm. Scorpio sun, Sag rising, look at me. Oh you know, yeah, like I kind of very always much look at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very much have that energy, but I never, I always said to my family, we need to have our own show because we're fucking crazy. Like, please, can we have our own show? Please, we're going to pitch this to someone, but never really seriously. And then when I met Johan, a friend of mine, who's a crazy 90 day fiance fan, Sandra, who was on all three seasons, actually, that I was on. She was also my boss, my first boss in New York City. She, she was like, oh, my God, you have to go on 90 day. You know, she, I was like, did I help with the visa? <laughs> you know, right. like, why? Right. Yeah. She's like, that, that was I don't know. Just, too. Yeah, because I thought, like, it would help our situation in some way. So she sent me but the just so you info. all know, people, they do not help at all with the visa. They cannot help with the visa, and they will not. So anything that you all see on the show that is actually us, doing the work they literally just follow yeah. just so that's clear 
Yeah, no, no, no. They do not. Um, so I, I emailed casting, but I was like still at the resort. I'm like yeah. very drunk. And they got back to us right away. And it was yeah. just like, from then, it was just like super quick. I think within like a month, we had a bunch of Zoom calls and, and we were starting Love in Paradise. And it was what is, right? It, it is wild how all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, whoa. Yeah. Um, Was your business already set up before you started filming? Yeah. So I was still teaching in a classroom, but Yinsa had been around, yeah, for four or five years at that point um, okay. and it was kind of like a side gig right 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 were you okay I'd love to pick your brain about this and then I'll, I'll go after you but were you uh, nervous were about being on television and doing very specific spiritual work right so like I feel like and, and you can totally tell me how you feel but I feel like somebody who does astrology versus somebody who does root work can often be looked at very differently from the collective you know and you and I both do very niched spiritual work and so was there like a nervousness apprehension how am I going to be taken if this is God's will let's just fucking go like fuck it like what, what were the vibes yeah so I mean I went to my baba beforehand and I was like listen these are all the things I want to cover like they come to my house they've seen my altars you know my mm -hmm. house looks kind of crazy you know they have no you know they have no idea anything and anybody in production knew nothing about ATR right. and like at the root of my practice at that time was very my very, practice was very much rooted in OTR work and yeah with and you know stuff centered in Yoruba culture so as a white woman from Long Island right York, I noticed ATR, that yeah yeah I cool. knew this was gonna be some shit <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. very very prepared for that and so I just, you know, I kept having conversations with my mentors, like, you know, what are we willing to cover? What are we not yeah. willing to cover? Yeah. Are we going to address this when it does release? Yeah. And, you know, Bob, my Baba is like a very public Baba. He, mm -hmm. you know, there are a few of them who are, he's just a very public figure. He does theater. He does all kinds of like very public things. Um, and he speaks publicly about the work that he does. So he was like, I think this is great. You know, I think this is a great idea for him, especially yeah. because it's like, you know, I think we're such a Christian nation and we're so, you know, we're, we're so ignorant of where our culture comes from right? and all aspects of our culture, not just the spiritual aspects of our culture, but all aspects of our culture. We're very ignorant about where it comes from. We think that it's ours. Yeah. And I thought it was important to start to have conversations about what else is out there. Yeah. Other than what you've been conditioned to believe. Same. Why do people practice what they practice? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was really about Johan because he's so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he's full so, of shit. Yeah. yeah. And the, the practices that I engage in. Yeah. And, and you know, the practices that I engage in are his practices. These aren't my practices. Yeah. These are, you know, yeah. this is rooted yeah. in his culture. Right. And so right. those are it was also that like I wanted him to be exposed to that and see it from a number of different perspectives because mm -hmm. if it was always just going to be me in the home then he was just going to think I was crazy but right. if he was able to see that this was something bigger than him um maybe it would impact his thinking it did not yeah but yeah that was my yeah. thinking around it yeah yeah um for me I felt very similar to you um, not just with Manuel, but like the collective in general and wanting to shine a light on this very soul led work that has been going on for eons that people have no clue about. Um, I'm, I don't know about you, but I have been so blessed to meet such talented spiritual workers who are really out here doing God's work, myself and yourself included. And so when we were presented with the opportunity to be on the show, it was like, we are in 2024. I've been calling this age a spiritual revolution. You know, I remember a time where I had to hide my tarot cards and now you can get all of this information online. Like I, I've never seen our work be so highlighted ever. And mm -hmm. I think it's great because I think we need to see that there's more than one way to get to God. And Manuel being so Catholic, I'll never forget this wasn't on TV. Um, 
we were in Ecuador at a resort and I told him, I go, I have to tell you something. And he was like, okay. And I go, I'm a witch. And he laughed in my face and was like, honey, you're not a witch. And I was like, how the fuck do you think we are at this beautiful ass resort? My witch money. Like, I was like, well, like this is a full-fledged thing. This is a whole business. This is something I've been doing. And it was at that moment that I had to open him up a bit more to not only am I a spiritual worker, am I a spiritual teacher, a spiritual guide, a mentor, an astrologer, a tarot reader, I help other mystics build their businesses, but this is also something that I'm, I'm thriving in and I love deeply and believe deeply with my whole heart and my whole soul. Um, we're still getting there. You know, so he's down with the astrology and the tarot. I'm an Akashic Records reader. I haven't really gone that deep with him yet because uh, the Akashic Records is very woo, if you will. Um, yeah. But we're, we're getting there. And I do think people like you and myself and other folks that have done something as brave and as bold as to take their practice on mainstream networks, this is helping little people who look like us and who, you know, are kind of the weirdos in school and who are hiding their tarot cards and who feel this really, really intense, deep connection to Pachamama or God source universe and don't know what to do about it. It's about representation. Like that's what it comes down to, yeah. you know? And so yeah. I don't regret it, um, but there are hills and valleys. And I'd love to talk to you some more about that, this idea of visibility, right? And you know what did, what did spider-man say or spider-man's uncle with great commitment comes great responsibility some shit like that and yeah with great know, power comes great responsibility yeah yeah and it's so actually it's like, a philosopher thank you yeah, right okay and so thank <laughs> you for that correction and, and so it's kind mm -hmm. of like okay so we're doing this we're, we're doing this we're opening up this whole like Pandora's box of things. Cause you know, one question begets another, begets another, begets another. And then you're dealing with the naysayers. You're dealing with the other side of the coin. You're dealing with the folks who would rather not try to understand, but rather judge and ridicule. You're dealing with folks who have never even considered spiritual work at all. Like their mind is just so narrow-minded. And these days when everybody's a keyboard warrior, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. online. And also too, we've got our relationships that are on TV as well. So there's a whole bunch of things, right? <laughs> I, you and I have had a very different go about it, I think, than a lot of other couples that have entered into this, this universe because of the nature of the work that we do. Um, yeah. How has that experience been for you and and been for your your work and your business and staying visible you know so in the beginning it was hell yeah you know it was really really hard to navigate because I felt like I had to fight with everyone but not for the yeah. right reasons it was more like yeah. I had to prove my work yeah yeah what I've learned over the last couple of years that I've been having these experiences is that Someone is annoyed that I'm recording a podcast or intentionally blasting a, a video. That's nice. I really enjoy that. Um, That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> I love it here. <laughs> I love it here. So um, I would say in the beginning, it was really hard because I felt like I had to prove my worth. It was very much yeah. like an inner child journey. Like, yeah. no, I'm right. No, I'm smart. No, I'm mm -hmm. not. Okay. No, no, no. Like, I'm this yeah. and all these things. So that was very like kind of the very beginning. Yeah. Yep. You know, Johan and I were still together. And then it became, well, if you're really a witch, how did you not see this coming? Oh my God, all and the time, was, all the time. Somebody's posting that on yeah. my socials. Ah. Yeah. So what I've learned now is what is this um, I actually really enjoy it because first of all, no one can win an argument with me because right. I'm never going to argue about something that I don't have a stack of evidence to stick for. So I almost as soon as I get a criticism, I'm like, okay, here are all of the flaws in your argument. Mm -hmm. Give me more. You know, and so now I start to allow these comments to give me talking points because yeah. my responses to the comments are also SEO. They're yeah. also, you know, language that is attached mm -hmm. to my name on the internet. So mm -hmm. the negative comments and the questions and the ridicule that people give me, I will go back and forth with them sometimes because I just drop evidence. And just drop yeah, evidence and just that's drop that evidence. Sag rising coming out. I don't know if you know I'm a Sagittarius yeah. sun. 
So Are you? Yeah, it was, oh. was Sagittarius sun, Aquarius moon, Cancer rising. So okay. that teacher, I vibe with that. And like facts, I'm always telling my audience, fact check the fuck out of me. Don't take anything yeah. I'm saying for gold. Please fact check me. Now yeah. just and power. I, and you know what? You know, and if I am wrong about something, correct me and let's have mm-hmm. a dialogue about it. Because mm-hmm. this is how I was as a teacher. Like I always had a classroom where I facilitated dialogue. And yeah. you know, in this modern era, some of my kids were experts in things that I maybe only knew a little bit about because my right. job is to know something about everything and maybe right. go into these rabbit holes of World War II or whatever it is. Right. You know? And so what the way that I always ran my classroom was I made my kids experts on things that they cared about. And they taught each other and me. And that's how I facilitated learning. And that's what I do in my business as well. And that's what I do with people on the internet. It's like, yeah. okay, this, this is this is my training. This is my life experience. Here are the testimonials from my clients. Here are videos and images of how this work works. You know, here are where my clients were six years ago. Here's where they are now. So mm-hmm. you don't have to believe me, but right. here's here's all the paperwork. Yeah. So like if you can battle this paperwork, if you can refute this paperwork, let's yeah. do it. But no nobody's able to do that. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's that part. There's also there are a lot of influencers in the ACR space who you know, the thing with me is the the hate that I get isn't just about sweet for me. It's hate that other people love me. Because yeah. I'm some people's favorite person, right? Mm-hmm. And I, because of that, other people who, who really dislike me, who I really rub them the wrong way because of their mm-hmm. own shadow work that they need to do, yep, which I'm sure that's you're it. familiar with. Yep. You know, they, they don't just hate who I am. They also hate the love I get. And right. so they work extra hard mm-hmm. to drag me. Mm-hmm. And, and so like there was this one influencer who calls herself a content creator and a teacher of ATR. She took a clip from the show and we were planting the banana trees and she put it on the internet and said like all these terrible things about me. And mm. first I had the video taken down because yeah. it was copyrighted material and I'm not playing that game. Right. And right. the next thing I did was like, I reached out to her personally because she, she knew my Baba and she could have reached out to her personally and she didn't, she wanted to make a scene. I reached out to her personally and was like, these are all, if you're really practicing this, keep a cool head, right? right? Practice right. Iwapele and you don't drag other bitches on the internet. You let right. God take care of that. Right, right. That's right. not spiritual work. Spiritual no. work is not driving anyone else on the internet. Exactly. Spiritual work is coming to me. Right. Spiritual work is coming to me saying, listen, I have a problem with what you're doing. Let's talk about why you're mm-hmm. in this space and why you made this story. Mm-hmm. Not, not let me use you as an example for what I have to say. Let me not exactly. create my own content and instead steal your content and offer commentary on right. it. Which is, you know, so much a part of this world. Is we, we're in this night Very much a part of this world. Yeah, it's like yeah. all of these bloggers who don't create anything original. No, and just like watch no. something that someone else has created and offer their commentary on it, which I think 100%. is 100%. It, it's very interesting. And I, I purposely made a point um, for my own spiritual and mental well being to stay away from like those areas of the internet where I know I'm being talked about in some sort of way. Um, I don't know about you, but the 90 day experience for me has shown me that we still have a lot of work to do with the mental and spiritual health of the collective. Um, Some of the vitriol that comes from social media, and and like you said, it's, it's based on their own shadow work. I could never think to waste my precious time to hunt somebody down on the internet just to say some vile shit. Like I like that I still do not understand. Like you are literally looking for me just to say something vile. Why? Like what who did it? What's wrong? Well, I think I, 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 mean, I, I don't get answer. it. Yeah. I think we know the answer. I think the demographics of the show is very yeah. Christian nationalist. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. very middle America. Yeah, yeah. And we right, are the enemy so. and, right, and right, doing this right. work. And right. so there are very specific talking points that they have. Mm-hmm. There are specific there are very specific ways that they attack us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's not in a disorganized movement. And right. so when we have an audience that is global and mm-hmm. we get love and they're the right. to support us, just like in any political campaign, there are going to be people whose entire job is to, to tear that down. It. 
and tear it down so that we don't get power so that we don't get people on our side because once they're on our side they're not on their side anymore exactly and so it's a lot deeper I believe than just like you know Joe in his basement jerking off I think it's really really big on the agenda yeah yeah and speaking of the love I want to talk to that too Let's talk about the love because as much as we are yeah. talking about, you know, the hate and the vitriol, I have also gotten a lot of love and a lot of support yeah. and a lot of folks DMing me like, thank you so much for shining a light on, on the work. I am a fellow witch. I'm a fellow mystic. I'm a fellow spiritual worker. Thank you for being visible. Thank you for showing your practice. Keep going. Like that has also really filled my heart with joy because that's one of the reasons why I decided to bring my practice public. Um, I'm sure you're getting a lot of love too over the years because you've been on the show now on and off for a number of years. Yeah, um, I definitely, I mean, what I get is a lot of women who are in abusive relationships mm-hmm. and they saw like, you know, Johan's behavior, if you've been in a narcissistic relationship before, especially with a Latin man, it mm-hmm. is textbook. It is textbook. Right. You know, the machismo culture the Maranismo yeah. culture mm-hmm. is very much a part of Dominican culture, which goes all the way back to Trujillo and the way that it was accepted in the country. You know, mm-hmm. I don't blame an individual for this. I definitely blame a system, but mm-hmm. it creates this crabs in a barrel mentality in the country where everybody has to oppress someone because everybody's being oppressed in someone. Right. And so for men in that culture, it really is the women who are taking the brunt of the abuse. Yeah. And things that are very normal in these families, um, and have been normal in my family as well. After my healing work and the spiritual work that I've done, it was no longer normal for me. Mm-hmm. And so I get a lot of women who are like, oh my God, I see my husband in Johan or I see myself in you. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it made me finally be able to leave or it made me finally yeah. be able to make these different choices. So I think those that's where I feel the most rewarding. I also have women who are coming to me and are willing to spend thousands of dollars to come on a retreat with me. Mm-hmm. After seeing this shit show on TV, because they can see, you know, the way that I've not just navigated my relationship, but also navigated the online space through all that. Yeah. I sh- I've shown up every day since day one, you know, yeah. regardless of what any, what is happening. Whatever is happening on Sunday regardless. night doesn't matter. Yeah. I, sh- I still show up for my work every day and I use it as a platform to speak about relationships. Right. So like. How did someone like me end up in a relationship like this? How does that happen? Let's mm-hmm. talk about it. What happens once you've been in a relationship like this and now you have to move on with your life? How do we navigate that? Right. So, you know, in many ways, I can use the show to kind of talk about how we navigate these challenging things in our lives. Because Johan's an archetype. You know, there are right. a million Johans in the world and there are a million, I'm an archetype. There are a million me in the world. We're, I feel like so we're all kind it? of archetypes on the show, right? We like, all. They, they yeah. pigeonhole us into an archetype. It's TV. Like, you know, if anybody's surprised yeah. by hearing that, you got to open up your eyes. You know, it's television. Not saying anything yeah. that's out of control, you know, it's true. Um, yeah. Do you feel like being on such a huge platform like the show like 90 day has made you a stronger better entrepreneur absolutely yeah i mean there's no there's no failure i can't circumvent and there are a lot of them you know there are a lot of mistakes that are made in the entrepreneurial journey and i feel like you know it really has given me this like thick skin yeah Um, for sure That makes, and also like, I recognize that I'm going to be streaming on television for the rest of my life. Yeah, isn't that crazy? (laughs) And even beyond, right? Like my Mm. grandmother is still watching the same Perry Mason episode. So like, there are going to be people sending me these messages 10 years from now. Yeah. Like you were, you you know, your story inspired me. So just having that opportunity, you know, to connect with people, I think is, Mm -hmm. is what makes me so grateful for having you know, that platform because yeah, there are mm-hmm. hard things that come with it, but you can ignore the hard things to right. appreciate the opportunities and the blessings that it brings. I would agree. And not only just ignore the hard things, but learn from the hard things. You know, mm-hmm. um, there was something that you had told me um, a while back when I was going through it, my cancer rising in me kind of makes me a bit of an emo baby sometimes. And um, you had said something like, um, like, you know, when you get through 
being on this show as an entrepreneur, like you can get through anything with your business, like you feel invincible. And like that has stuck with me ever since, because like you said, I've been showing up every single day as well. This is my job. That's what people don't recognize. They're like, get a job. I have a job. Like this is my job. <laughs> this yeah. is my well, job. People are like, if you don't like it, get off the internet. I'm like, I work on the internet. I work <laughs> Like, what What don't you guys get? And so, you know, I'm showing up every single day in my power, in my truth, in my authenticity, no matter what is airing on Sundays. But we are spiritual beings having a human existence. So I'd be lying if I were to say that there aren't some things that don't get to me. Of course, there are oh, yeah. some things that get to me. And it's in those pockets where you really, truly find your power. And I think feel that I feel stronger in my entrepreneurial journey now than I ever have. And I know we only are going up from here. So it's really exciting. There were moments though, um, that felt frightening that felt like, holy shit, did I do the wrong thing? So I, I want to oh, speak yeah. to that a little bit, especially to like the baby entrepreneurs that might be listening that want to do this spiritual work online and just some of the pitfalls that do come. And one thing that kind of made me nervous, I think sometime along this journey, I've been on TV now like two years, like, did I do the wrong thing for my brand? Am I tanking my brand by being on this show? What, you know, like, and navigating those feelings and um, mistrusting myself and, you know, it's worry, fear, and doubt. Like, that's all it really comes down to. And when you do the shadow work and allow yourself to heal through the shadow work, you get through it. But those are real feelings that I had. Did you have feelings like that? And how did you navigate them if so? I have those feelings every single day. Yeah. Every single day, yeah. those feelings come up for me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. It would be so much easier to fill this retreat if I had never done 90 day. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Because I had all these people. Right. You know, like I had um, George Murphy. You know who he is? No. He had, he's one of, he's like one of these bloggers, commentary. I don't really know what he does. But he had reached out to one of my clients who was registering for this retreat. And he said, I'm not giving her. I wouldn't give her my money. She's a scammer. Jesus. This guy has no idea who I am in the world. I've run these retreats multiple times. I've never seen right. anyone like, right. and had she not registered, she did end up like joining us, but like, had she not done that, like I would have come for this man. Like, right, I would have right, come right, for this right. man legally, yeah. personally, and yeah. using every resource I had to come for him. And like mm -hmm. the thought that I would have had to do that, it's really upsetting to me. And And I only know that that happened because she told me and I wonder right. how many, how often and how many times that happens that where it's not told to me. And so, you know, I think about like pe people who were like really excited about joining us and decide they don't want to. I'm like, mm -hmm. what was it? Is it the thing? Is it the show? Right. Is it, you right, know, is right, it right. Exactly who I was? But then I think like the people who do join me are always the people who are aligned with my work. Right. I've never had someone say that they wanted their money back or that. We didn't mm -hmm. get the experience they paid for. And so mm -hmm. I just say like, you know, whoever is for me is going to show up at my door anyway. Yeah. And nobody else outside of me has the power to prevent me from doing the work that I'm yeah. supposed to do. Yeah. The only thing that's going to get in the way is my own mind and my exactly. own Exactly. And my own, you know, and listening to the noise. And so if I just mm -hmm. choose not to listen to the noise and know that I've been doing this literally, I've been teaching my entire so life. Long. Yeah my entire life so like there really isn't anything that anyone can say mm -hmm. um with with any evidence you know okay. I, I just like show me evidence exactly mm -hmm. you know and that's exactly what you said what I lean into when those sorts of thoughts would creep up and and just I would go back to my testimonials and I'd be like look at how many lives that you've changed look at what you've built from the ground up I didn't I'm not a trust fund kid no silver spoon like I built my business mm -hmm. from the ground fucking up you know, and I worked really, really hard on what I've accomplished. And y'all be damned if I let a goddamn matrixy ass TV show put me into the ground and like keep me in bed depressed because of some weird shit airing on TV. You know, if anything, like you said, we have to use these as speaking points. And I'm a firm believer that we almost kind of choose our lives through our birth chart and stuff like that. And yeah. we chose this. So, and we chose this for a multitude of reasons. We're going to be streaming on TV for the rest of our lives. Can you imagine how many people are going to be influencing in a positive way to not just yeah. 
live a spiritual life, but also to realize, hey, they could work for themselves if they want to. I come from a family of nurses. So when I was like, I want to build my business, they're like, girl, what? You want to do what now? You know? And so to be somebody who goes against the grain fearlessly, is there's so much power rooted in that alone. And, and I think that's what needs to be leaned into when you want to do something that's a bit different, if you will, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're a capitalist society and our modern economy is born during industrialization. So you work mm -hmm. for the man, mm -hmm. you know, if you're in my particular class of humans, you get a union job. That's mm -hmm. like what my people do, mm -hmm. right? Everybody mm -hmm. works. It's an electrical union, yeah. a sanitation union, or a teaching yeah. union, or a hospital union. Like everybody's doing yeah. some kind of union job. You get your pension, you get your retirement, you do 20 years, you sit in the backyard and like, that's the life. You buy your parents' mm -hmm. house and like, right. that's the cycle. Right. And like, I never, from the day I was born, wanted any fucking part of that. I was mm -hmm. kicked out of my either. house for the first time when I was 13 years old mm -hmm. because I, I was just not having any of it. It was never for right. me. It's still not for me. I'm now taking care of my 89 year old grandmother in the suburbs mm -hmm. of Florida. And like, I'm doing it because it's my grandmother and I'm the only one who can or will or whatever. But it's mm -hmm. like, it's a reminder of how much hell right. living in the suburbs and yeah. doing this groundhog day yeah, yeah, life, yeah. you know, is it's so not me, but you know, I'm grateful that I have Yinsa and my business to like keep mm -hmm. me creative and keep me excited, mm -hmm. but I don't leave my house and join the matrix in any way. Shape, or form no, like, for real. I'm so really true. just try hard not to be a part of it. And it's just, you know, for people who are creatives, because what people don't realize is when they think of entrepreneur, they think business and finance, but actually it's they creatives. Do. You have it's to think creatives. of entrepreneurs yeah. as like as, as a creative person, because you can be a small business owner mm -hmm. and open a business and work in that business for 20 years. That is not the same thing as an entrepreneur. Exactly. An entrepreneur opens a business and then takes the money they make from that in business and they invest in something else and then they grow that and then they take that money and they invest. Exactly. Entrepreneurs have no liquid cash. No, no cash. All it all goes right back into the business. It all goes right back in. It's, it's and that's of, like that's one of the is. struggles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely one of the struggles. But it's like, you know, when people are like, slow down, just stop, just let this one thing permeate. And it's like, that's not the creative experience. You know, I right. work in first. I work, I'm a Scorpio, right. you know. Yeah. There are times when I am on fire for three months and there are times when mm -hmm. I want to hide under my covers for a couple of months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like yeah. rethink things and change things. That so, water energy. You know, yeah, I, for sure. Yeah. I feel that. I work Not in sports too. There are like days where I'm like, let's fucking go. And then there are days where I'm like, hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, what advice would you have for anybody listening who wants to get into spiritual work in a professional way? My first thing is why. Yeah. So I have, I know someone who like is starting on the spiritual journey and right away she figured out a way to monetize it. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have to do the work here and really live the work here before you can sell the work. So that's the mm -hmm. first thing. I think it has to be a part of your you know, you, you really have to know yourself and know your practice and train. I mean, mentors, mentors, are I big. wouldn't, I don't think anybody should be living in any, you know, independent profession without mentors. I agree. You don't know what you don't know. I so agree. finding a mentor or a coach to support you is the first thing. I think deciding you know doing some zone of genius work everyone makes fun of me when I say that because they don't know the lingo but like yeah I know the lingo are, I know exactly what you mean where are you so amazing that it's effortless like what mm -hmm. is because everybody has this thing that they do that's so amazing that it's effortless so like what if you're trying to do spiritual work what is it about it that is effortless to you if it takes yeah. you three days to draw a birth chart then maybe that's not the thing that you're selling exactly Right. You know, if you really can't pull a tarot card without looking in the book, you shouldn't be selling that yet. Right. You know, right. like I think you you have to, re you know, we say that Ayurveda takes seven years of study before you mm -hmm. like really good at it. I think it's 10. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. you know, decide what you're monetizing and why, and is it rooted in the right reasons? Yeah. You know, 
it the, the way that I kind of entered into this world is too many people were asking me for help for free. <laughs> Right. You know, yeah. Just yeah. In, in my DMs or at yeah. work in the staff room or wherever it was, like, oh, can you tell me what essential oil to use for this or what's mm-hmm. a good meditation practice for this? And it was like everybody was asking me. And so as I'm also in human design, I'm a generator, and our um, movement is to respond. We don't, mm-hmm. we're not supposed to initiate things. We're mm-hmm. supposed to respond to what people need. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, that is in my business. That's always kind of how I shift gears and how I add different arms is everybody's asking me for something so I'm like okay this must be a path I'm supposed to go down right so like with apparel for example everyone's like you need to make yoga clothes you need to make yoga clothes because they don't make yoga pants for people who are built like us and I was like you know what you're right and that's kind of what what brought me down that path so you know I just kind of wait for people to come to me and ask for what I'm offering so that would be some advice is know your human design yeah right do some human design which you can take a human design quiz online and that will help you navigate how to approach the work. You know, whether you're a projector, mm-hmm. you're a manifesting generator, you're generating mm-hmm. all of those things I think are helpful in understanding. Yeah. Knowing your birth chart, right? Like you know how important your birth chart is and it's figuring a big out deal. your life's path. Yeah. What's in your tenth house? You know, mm-hmm. what are you working with in your tenth house? How's it, how hard is this gonna be for you? That's what I would look at first. Right, right. You know, from the Pisces from the rules my tenth house. So it makes sense, right? And when I when I yeah. saw that, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I know that this is where we need to go. I also have um, uh, Jupiter and Chiron in my first house ruled by Cancer. So mm. there's lots of emo tea there. But that's why I work so much in shadow work and self-love and personal development. I, well, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why, because I've got Chiron conjunct Jupiter right on my first house in Cancer. So like, my life's work is to help people develop personally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally. Like it's, it's part of it, you know, um, because that's yeah. what I've had to do on my own journey, you know? And so being on TV has been a lot of inner child work. Like you said earlier, I really resonated with that um, inner child work that I didn't know I needed. Um, and so wow. I am grateful for that sort of medicine and that sort of healing. Um, uh, Cause it also has opened up a lot of opportunities and doors. No, um, yes. Danielle, you have a retreat coming up, right? I wanted to talk a little bit about I that. I do. Soon. Yes, it's in August, right? I'm so excited. Yeah, August 17th to the 24th, we're going to Tuscany. So one of the things that I loved when I was a costume teacher was field trips. I never was in the building. I was always like outside doing learning like in the real world. And yeah. so the way that I run my retreats are very much through the lens of a teacher and through a curriculum. Yeah. So every single day of the retreat builds on each other and we're always doing something to work on ourselves. And then what we're doing outside of the villa, outside of the space, the excursions we're going on are to build on that same work. So Rooted Reflections is about studying your ancestry and understanding how your character traits and your patterns that you've experienced didn't start with you and then they came long before you. And so it's this idea of looking at the culture that we come from um, and trying to understand why do we see food this way? Why do we see religion yeah. this way? Why do we see yeah. the language this way? Why do we see work yeah. this way? And so my participants are doing work with a genealogist, actually looking at their family trees and where their people mm-hmm. come from, what were some of the things that their families experienced. And also they're doing workshops with me where we talk about, okay, so how has that lived in your life? How has that impacted you mm-hmm. physically, emotionally, spiritually, in all the ways? And what do you want to do about it? Like, is it all working yeah. for you? Or are there some things you want to change? I work with a lot of women who have challenging relationships with food. I, mm-hmm. you know, growing up in very white suburbs of Long Island, everybody was anorexic. Everybody was right. anorexic, Everybody had body mm-hmm. image issues. And so that's something that I dealt with for most of my life. It's like really hating my physical self, hating my body, hating my fat, my cellulite, my shortness, whatever it was. You know, the way that I walked all these things that like my family and my peers made fun of when I was little, like that was something mm-hmm. that I really knew as an adult because before I was on TV, I taught high school, you know? Right. So like right. those kids are just as mean as the kids on Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. No. Yeah. High school, so, middle school, like, elementary school is a dangerous place. <laughs> like, yeah, so like uh, learning how to love myself enough to be mm-hmm. not just on display in front of kids who didn't necessarily want to see me every day, but getting them to learn to love me in my true self and be able yeah. to learn from me in my true self, regardless of what my fit was like that day, yeah, yeah, regardless yeah. of whether my makeup or my hair was done. Yeah. It was like, that was part of the practice. And that's what I do with the internet now. And like, 
one of the reasons why I'm so anti-work, like getting work done on my body Mm -hmm. is because it's been such a labor of love to learn to love myself as it is. I know if I start going down that path, you know, it's just, I'm going to end up looking like a part of the right 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 it's like oh well let me just fix this and let me just fix this and it's like every day instead it's a practice of let me just love this so I think um a lot of the people who come on my retreats and and who do the work with me and who I'm looking for in August are people who are need to learn to accept themselves for who they are Mm -hmm. stand in the truth who they are not try to pretend they're something Mm -hmm. they're not and if there's something that they're really not happy with in themselves to learn how to work through it because mm-hmm. nobody else is going to teach us how to work through our shit. We really have to learn right. that on our own. But uh, what I do is I teach men and women, primarily women, but some, there's always a men somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. the tools to learn these skills and to navigate life and do life. Fuck yeah. Easier. Fuck yeah. Um, are there still spots? There are still spots. I have five spots left. Okay, cool like, beans. So we will put... Day. So we will put all of that in the show notes. So if y'all want to go to Tuscany with Danielle, yeah. go check the show notes. Um, let the people know where can they find you? How can they work with you? Maybe Tuscany is not in the books, but they're interested in working with you. How can they do all of that? So um, if you go to any of my social platforms, it's all Liv Yinsa, L-I-V-E-Y-I-N-S-A. There's a link in all of my bios that has all of my offerings, my services, where you can contact me. I always tell people to join my newsletter so that, yeah, you know, for sure. training, some classes are coming up. I have a yin training coming up in New York and in Florida in the fall. Um, I'm doing a 200-hour yoga teacher training in Bali next summer um, that I'm opening up 50 spots for. So that's going to be okay. really, really powerful. Um, yeah, so those are, those are the different ways that you can work with me. There's entry points at every price point. So, okay. you know, I don't, I want the same way. I want spirituality to be accessible. I don't want to only, you know, sometimes these practices, people can charge tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, 100%. Work. Yeah. You know, so. Um, people are over here like, why are your readings $300? And I'm like, I know an astrologer who charges 1200 Like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, but yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. this is super good. Yeah, I'm excited that we got to do this. Yes, me too. Sorry that too. I'm doing it from an airport. Just so that everyone knows, I'm literally in an airport. I was at the airport at 3 a.m. I had a delay and now I got my layover. So that's why I look so crazy. Yes. No, you look absolutely great. And I'm glad that we were able to get this in. And, you know, for the folks listening, I feel like Danielle and I are going to be in each other's lives for quite some time. So be on the lookout for more collaborations with us too, um, because we clearly have some magic to create together. And you all already know, if you like the episode, like it, share it with a friend, share it with your partner, share it with your mama, share it on your stories, tag us. Danielle's Instagrams will be Instagram, TikTok, all of that will be in the show notes. You know, I'm Ashley Michelle 90 day. And you know, if you're feeling so called, go ahead and leave the goddess complex, that five-star review, honey. It helps people find this work. And uh, with that being said, thank you so much, Danielle, for being on. And I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao, ciao for now. Hello, friends. I hope you loved today's episode. Make sure you share it with a friend, share it with somebody that you love and tag me on the gram at Ashley Michelle 90 day and let me know your thoughts. Leaving that five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify is literally what helps this work get to the right people. As you may or may not know, we are in the middle of a spiritual revolution and us being able to get our hands on resources like this podcast and others is what is literally going to make the world go round. So do me this favor and please leave me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and share the episode with somebody you love. It really, truly does mean the world to me. I love you so very much and I will see you in the next one.